unsolved crimes newspaper as a response to Cavalier civil society organization within the framework of a struggle against religious extremism presents Incitement of religious hatred expert Anti-cultist Thackeray's vice president Exposed Joseph Grybowski, President and CEO of Grybowski Global Strategies. Founder and Chairman of the Board of Directors of the Nobel Peace Prize nominated Institute on Religion and Public Policy. Honestly, I, I think the only term I could use to describe uh, Alexander Dvorkin's activities is insane. Um, it, just watch him at OSCE meetings. He'll walk down a hallway talking to himself. He accuses religious organizations of being extremist because they don't support uh, divorce. Well, neither is the Roman Catholic Church. Um, you know, Dvorkin has no um, no educational background, no expertise, no no basis for his rants. They're simply um, they're simply the ramblings of an angry, insane man. Do you know him personally? I had requested a meeting with him maybe 15 years ago, and he uh, angrily denied the meeting. I was at the same conference that he was uh, in Greece in 2004, I believe it was. And at that conference, I gave a speech on the importance of religious freedom for democracy and security. Well, unknown to me, the organizers of the conference gave Dvorkin an advanced copy of my text and then spent the next 30 minutes attacking me um, and attacking the United States. Uh, then after the uh, after the event that evening, that afternoon in the evening at a dinner, he um, uh, came up to me at the dinner table, began screaming, and then walked away. I, as you can imagine, was embarrassed as I was in the presence of uh, members of the diplomatic corps in Greece. He then came back again and started uh, saying, well, now I know you're going to destroy me. Now I know that you're going to come after me. And my only response was, you're not important enough for me to come after you. And he was so insulted by that that he stormed away. Uh, I then saw him again at an, an OSCE conference uh, where we did not engage, but that's where I said he was walking down the, the hallway, uh, speaking to himself and, and looking rather, well, crazy. Nikolai Shaburov, Religious and Cultural Studies Scholar, Director of the Educational and Scientific Center for the Study of Religions of the Russian State University for the Humanities, Professor, Moscow, Russia. The fact that Dworkin headed the Expert Council under the Ministry of Justice is, of course, a scandalous event. This is absolutely. Why? I do not know a single serious specialist, religious studies scholar, who would somehow positively speak about Dworkin, his activities, his texts, his statements, and about the forms of his controversy. I would say he and his followers excite interreligious hatred constantly. And they slander organizations, which, by the way, quite legally exist and registered in the Russian Federation and operate within the law. Massimo Intervenia, Italian religion sociologist, doctor of philosophy, professor founder and managing director of the Center for Studies on New Religions, former representative on combating racism, xenophobia and discrimination at OSCE. Mr. Dworkin, uh, in one way, he is connected with an international network of anti-cultists. Mm -hmm. So he seems 
it's uh, theories of the international anti-cult movement, he picks it up in an internal literature and bring them to Russia. On the other hand, for reasons I do not completely understand, he is taken seriously by parts of the Orthodox Church, while uh, I would say he is not taken seriously internationally, he tried to come to some academic conferences, he was more or less ridiculed uh, because uh, his reconstructions of groups uh, like the Hare Krishna or Jehovah's Witnesses were so far away from uh, academic life that he was not taken, so he stopped coming to academic conferences. But uh, uh, in Russia, for some reason, uh, I see his take seriously by parts of the Orthodox Church, which is very strange to me, yes, because yes. some theories are uh, really extreme. Sergei Ivanenka, religious studies scholar, grand PhD in philosophical sciences, head of the group of authors of the first Russian dictionary, religious associations of the Russian Federation, Moscow, Russia. You know, my acquaintance with Dworkin was in part accidental and in part it was logical. At that time I had been working in the building that has now been demolished. It was the parliamentary center under the Supreme Soviet of Russia and the catechization department of the Russian Orthodox Church, where Dworkin was employed, was nearby in the Vysokopetrovsky monastery. From there a lady called me, saying that they were gathering people who can lecture, who at least know something about religion. And it would be useful for me to talk with a specialist who deals with new religions, sects, recently came from America and so on. I came to talk. Well, it turned out that indeed the person was very active, his eyes were full of impatience. He has not changed since that, although about 30 years have passed, but we have already talked a little in recent years. He began to tell me that no dictionaries were needed at all, and there was no need to study anything at all. Everything was written in English already, basically. And we need to knuckle down all the sects, to ban them or limit severally, and so on. But the danger here seemed to me in the following. People were given a fuse not to study and not to conduct a dialogue with new religions and other religions. Not necessarily new, but to act from a position of force, to involve law enforcement agencies, authorities. James Richards, Foundation Professor of Sociology and Judicial Studies. Director of Judicial Program, University of Nevada, Reno. And Dworkin has played a major role in that with his writings and his uh, statements, his activities. Uh, as you know, I, the first thing I said to you folks was an article about the case in Moscow where... Yes, I know. In 1998. Uh, yes, I, I testified in that case as did Eileen Barker and Marat Sterin and, and many and others. Uh, that, that was a very fascinating experience, uh, but he, he was being sued personally, but everyone understood he was representing the Orthodox Church. And what happened in that case demonstrated he, he became a leader in this uh, coming together of the Russian Orthodox Church with some very conservative nationalistic politicians in Russia. Well, the trial was a very odd thing where he, you know, he defended himself. He was his own counsel. He was in the courtroom. He, he questioned me. I testified for one entire afternoon, and he was the questioner. Uh, he was not very effective, but it turns out he didn't have to be effective because the, the judge and the other members of the tribunal uh, ended up simply following orders and ruled in favor of him and the church. He actually ended up attacking a member of the Hare Krishna who had a video camera during the trial. And, and he, act he actually got arrested for doing that, but of course he, was, he wasn't retained and charged and anything, but 
policeman did take him away briefly because he attacked this uh, Hare, Hare Krishna member who was videotaping the trial. Uh, he was out of control. But as I said, it didn't matter. If you read that article, you recall how the trial ended. It ended very abruptly with a clear demonstration of what Westerners and maybe some in Russia and Ukraine referred to as telephone justice. It was very obvious that that last day the trial in, took place when people went in thinking it was going to be an ordinary trial and every seat in the place was occupied by a representative of the Russian Orthodox Church in full garb and when it when the judge came in with the two lay judges, the leader of the group stood and offered, said, asked permission to offer a prayer for the, the judge, and the judge granted permission, and the, this person, this bishop, then uttered a prayer thanking the judge for the, the ruling they were about to deliver. And when he finished the, trial, the prayer, the judge picked up her gavel and said, this trial is over, I rule in favor of Mr. Dworkin, and I'm going away to the Black Sea to take a vacation, and I will write my opinion while I'm there. So it was, it was obviously a put-up job, but someone had made some telephone calls and organized this demonstration and organized this decision. And so the whole thing was a bit of a sham, although it went on for several weeks before this fateful day when it, a decision was made to end the trial. Kirill Tovbin, PhD in Philosophical Sciences, Associate Professor of the South Sakhalin branch of the Russian University of Economics. Dvorkin came up with the concept of destructive cult, has filled it with a certain meaning. This meaning does not stand up to criticism from the point of view of science, from the point of view of objectivity, but nevertheless it is filled with meaning. Dworkin consistently uses this term, and most importantly, this term is firmly nestled in the state echelons. Roughly speaking, Dworkin created a universal scarecrow with which one can eliminate almost all critics of the modern power system in Russia be it religious or non-religious movements, because Dworkin is very witty, I would even say talentedly, speaks about commercial cults, speaks about Herbalife, speaks about Kirby vacuum cleaners. Jonathan Mahoney, Doctor of Philosophy, Associate Professor of Philosophy at Kansas State University, United States, Kansas. It's the policies and the positions that people like Alexander Dworkin defend that I think are of most concern. And so, my way of thinking about the role of a figure like Dworkin is, it's problematic because you have an individual who has all these connections to government organizations and dominant religious institutions, in this case, the Russian Orthodox Church, who is using his role as a member of Thepris to I would put it this way, spread propaganda about religious minorities that pose almost no threat whatsoever to the political order. And so that's very problematic because on the one hand he represents the majority religious culture, which is being supported through Fekris, but on the other hand he's promoting exaggerated fears about religious minorities that are no real threat whatsoever. And this is a problem. Ekaterina Elbakian, Grand Page in Philosophical Sciences, member of European Association for the Study of Religions, professor of the Department of Sociology and Social Process Management of the Academy of Labor and Social Relations, Moscow, Russia. Why Alexander Dworkin does this, you probably need to ask him, but I doubt that he will answer you honestly. He is not so interesting to me. I understand his position and such a way of life. Whether he is a deeply religious person, this is his private matter. I cannot evaluate this. 
He behaves as he considers to be right. He believes that in this way he defends the Russian Orthodox Church. He does not understand that in this way he brings it much more damage than benefits. In his person the rock appears absolutely intolerant of otherness, absolutely not perceiving the idea of elementary civilization value, which is inherent in. At least theoretically, it should be inherent in our country, which, according to the Constitution at the moment, remains a democratic state with a certain scale of values, with the freedom of consciousness, tolerance, and so on. I think it's a, in the long run that history will not remember him well, and that the Church will be criticized in future historical treatments for giving him the free reign that they have given him. Stanislav Panin, PhD in Philosophical Sciences, Religious Studies Scholar, Associate Professor of the Department of Philosophy of the University of Chemical Technology of Russia. Dvorkin is a figure that has now extremely discredited itself in many ways. So much so that I often hear criticism of Dvorkin from people who call themselves anti-cultists. This is not once I have met that people who position themselves as anti-cultists and dissociate themselves from Dworkin radically, because this person is so odious already, has so proven itself from the bad side, by an incorrect presentation of facts, excessive emotionally and so forth. He is so odious that anti-cultists want to get rid of him already in order to create themselves a more favorable public image. Donald Baker, professor in the Department of Asian Studies, University of British Columbia, former director of the Center for Korean Research, Vancouver, Canada. He seems to be devoted to protecting Orthodox Christianity in Russia. And the way he's doing it is his language is, does appear to me to be quite extremist and he deviates from the truth, from the facts. He, he creates his own facts, which is very dangerous. It can, so I, I would not consider him a reliable source for information about religious movements. Boris Knare, Religious Studies Scholar, PhD in Philosophical Sciences, Associate Professor of the High School of Economics, Moscow, Russia. It is necessary to transmit a many-sided picture, but not just some one-sided ideas. I have a feeling that Alexander Dvorkin is very committed to the paradigm of use, the picture of the world that he had formed at the time of the 1990s. And therefore, it seems to me, it would be worth rethinking. Boris Falikov, historian of religion and publicist, specialist in the field of new religious movements, PhD in historical sciences, Moscow, Russia. When these anti-cultists act as experts and declare, for example, Bhavad Gita in the translation of Prabhupada as an extremist text, and the security forces support them, because we have such a law on extremism, this can lead to very serious scandals, including international scandals, as it happened here in Siberia several years ago, when Alexander Dworkin declared extremist the translation and comments of Prabhupada the founder of the Hare Krishna movement. A serious international scandal began. The Indian parliament has gathered and said that Bhagavad Gita is our classic religious text. And how can it be declared extremist? There were diplomatic notes sent. The ambassador was called. The ambassador sent a dispatch to Moscow. What is happening there? Our relations with India, our traditional ally, are spoiling. And then a quick move back was made, and the lawsuit was withdrawn, and Bhavad Gita fortunately was not declared an extremist material. We had a small controversy with Dworkin in the press on this subject, and in his defense Dworkin said that he did not try to declare Bhavad Gita 
an extremist text, but only the specific translation and commentary of Prabhupada. On this any Indologist, not only me, but any Indologist, will object him that he does not understand the essence of Hinduism, which is built entirely on the culture of interpretation, on the culture of commentaries. This is endless commenting. And here I would like to emphasize that such extreme ignorance of basics of religious studies by these sects fighters, anti-cultists, plays an extremely harmful role. Because they are actually inciting our power structures against certain religious minorities, new religious movements, while they themselves completely unaware of what these religious movements are. They are illiterate, scientifically illiterate, but I am afraid that they are illiterate in a broader sense too. And this, in my opinion, one of the biggest shortcomings of our anti-sect movement, which does great harm the Orthodox Church, which allows itself to be associated with the anti-cult movement and gives our grants to these sects fighters. And this discredits the state, which supports these movements through its power structures. And thus it discredits itself internationally, as it happened with the Hare Krishnas and India. This is all very bad for the church and for the state. Patricia Duval, attorney and member of the Paris Bar in France, co-author of a book about scandalous international organization factories, member of Scientific Committee of European Federation for Freedom of Belief. She has defended rights of the various organizations in international institutions such as a European Court of Human Rights, the Council of Europe, the United Nations and OSCE. And before came at the Iranian center, one of the heel attacks, for example, from Gong. You know, from Gong, which is just a very peaceful, spiritual movement with practices like exercises, med meditation, you know, mm -hmm. and all that. Okay. And they, 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 they attacked, he attacked them as if they were terrorists, uh, agents of the CIA and all that. But I think we have a problem because these people are not that. And uh, so, but he uh, helps, helps or helped the Chinese government in its rep uh, repression and a really bad repression of this group. And this repression, I mean, it, it got really, uh, you know, to torture and, uh, you know, it was really bad and um, institutionalizing them and so on. And, and uh, he, he supported in that by like, you know, doing what he did and, you know, going to the conferences in China to do that, to support that. And um, it's against the, the UN uh, declarations and reports about Hong Kong, you know, that China should stop with that. Schmidt William, Doctor of Philosophy. Religious Studies Schooler, Professor. Currently Dworkin comes forth as an odious person, who discredits everything significant he had made in the beginning. Now he looks like emotionally unstable, half-educated person, who became awkward. He behaves as a person with a disturbed consciousness, who is searching for a black cat in a black room. He labels things as a dummy psychologist, as a psychologist who is diseased himself, but who thinks that everyone around is sick. Willy Fautre, Belgium, Brussels. Director of Human Rights Without Frontiers International, member of European Union Fundamental Rights Agency, member of European Platform Against Religious Intolerance and Discrimination. And in the last few years we have seen the figures that suddenly appeared uh, on the scene uh, in Warsaw, denouncing globally with uh, uh, inaccurate uh, accusations uh, and uh, data uh, 
the cause, the, the danger that they represent to uh, security, to the family, to the country, uh, and so on. And uh, I must say that they, they have never been successful with that sort of message, and uh, everybody has realized that uh, uh, they were absolutely groundless, those accusations. And Vorkin was there. Vorkin was there uh, several years ago. It was uh, the first time I was in physical contact with him. <laughs> that guy looked absolutely crazy. He was running around uh, in the whole uh, in the room uh, in the room where there was that uh, high level meeting, taking pictures of those who were criticizing uh, a number of countries like Russia, for example, but also defending some uh, uh, religious uh, minorities. And I, I had. Uh, a document uh, at that time uh, in which I was accusing him and I didn't know before that conference that he would be present and I put that on the table, I displayed my documents on the table as many other human rights organizations and somebody saw him taking all my uh, <laughs> all my papers and putting them in the uh, paper basket. <laughs> Ludmila Filipovich, religious studies scholar Grand PhD in Philosophical Sciences, Vice President of the Ukrainian Association of Religious Studies Scholars, Professor of the Theological Seminary of the Ukrainian Greek Catholic Church and the East European University, Ukraine. Due to his outrageousness and super charisma, let's admit it, Dworkin has amazed us for so many years with his biting and, at the same time, humiliating characteristics of the other teachings. But he does it always from the confessional point of view, that is, he is always a Christian Orthodox apologist. But unacceptable is his manner. The question always arises, where is your Christian piety? Where is your humility? Where is your love for neighbor? That is, he hates the sin of descent so much that he transfers the hatred to the bearers of descent, that is, to a person. And we know pretty well that Christianity initially does not allow the condemnation of a person, even a sinful person, but only the condemnation of sin. Even now, in the face of a noticeable fundamentalization of all religions, a weakening of interreligious dialogue, Dworkin's extremist position and the tactics he chose, in my view, are unacceptable. I think that his rhetoric can be qualified as defamation. The dissemination of the defamatory information that does not correspond the truth. I absolutely believe that the actions of people like Vorkin and organizations like Fekris, um, that they are a threat to the international community. Um, they, they undermine civility, they undermine social engagement. Uh, in a world where we see rising extremism against Muslims, in a world where we see rising extremism against, in, uh, against minorities of all kind, uh, communities need to build engagement, not tear it down. And what Fekris does is spreads um, insecurity, it spreads lies, it spreads um, um, xenophobia.